Hello, I'm Warwick Lydiate. Can I give you a very warm invitation back to the Sanger House here in Taunton in Somerset? And um, I'm doing a series of talks on the Enneagram. The Enneagram is this um, image here behind me. Enneagram means figure of nine, and uh, this um, sets out nine clear personality types. So the Enneagram is at a very basic level a personality type indicator. It's much more than that, as we shall see, but that uh, is at its starting level. I want to give a quick reminder of what the nine types are. Usually I start with type one, but uh, I'm going today with the, the kind of three center, three energy center field. So eight, nine, one constitutes what uh, Enneagram experts call the body types. So type eight is the asserter. Type 9 is the peacemaker, and type 1 is the reformer. So those three, that little triad together, make um, the kind of body, the energy of those types comes from the body. And then 2, 3, and 4. 2 is the helper, 3 is the achiever, and 4, which we're going to look at in more detail today, is the romantic. And those three would constitute the, the heart types, the energy coming from the heart. It's all about connecting with others. And then type 5 is the observer. Type 6, the loyal skeptic. And type 7, the adventurer. These are known as the head types, so the, the thinking types. The energy comes through thought and the, the mind. Not to say that those do not overlap, they do. Body types both feel and think. Thinkers both feel and uh, experience the body. So there's a lot of interaction. It's, I guess, priorities, where those energies come from in um, priority. Uh, today, I was, um, as I said, I was, we're looking at um, type four, the romantic, which is the third of the heart types. Marianne Williamson says, all problems in the world, from the subtle to the immense, derive from someone having lost connection to the love within the heart. This is what we do. We lose connection with the heart, really at our peril. My, um, uh, one of my Enneagram teachers reminded us to be guardians of the heart. We're guardians of the heart. Whichever um, energy center is our chief focus, whether the body type or whether the, the head type, we must um, be these guardians of the heart. We must remember the state of the heart. And the heart can be, uh, it can be open or it can be closed. It can be broad and expansive or it can be closed off. Like the mind, we can be, a mind can be broad and encompassing many things or it can be small and just open to very little. Um, my teacher also said there are dangers in the dry heart, the dry, shriveled heart. A reminder for, for warmth. And this is really where we are um, preeminently with the type four, the romantic. Now, I have to say, uh, sometimes these labels, the initials, they tell us something about the type, but they're really not everything. So um, don't be completely taken in by this word, romantic. Type fours don't fall in love all over the place. It's not really about that. Uh, and also, as I say, it's not to say that fours are not thinkers and they don't feel the energy of the body. They do. Fours are the very kind of, almost have the, the delicate, subtle energy of, say, the poet, the writer, the, the musician, the artist, the maybe actor, maybe the field of drama, maybe in the writing of plays. They feel intently the things of the heart. 
everything in this area is intently felt by the four very deeply for the four life tends to have very high highs and quite low lows so it can be quite a volatile existence fours are often very deeply moved by sounds by beautiful music by the scent maybe a beautiful flower or a delicate perfume they can feel that very intently and feel moved um, these artistic talents um, may or may not be there but they will certainly be felt um, because of this sort of volatile nature they can have quite big mood swings often in a short space of time I can feel um, quite low one minute but then something will just take the four out of that mood into a higher place or something can just melt the heart and they go into a quieter more thoughtful maybe meditative uh, state there's a strong desire in many fours to feel unique to feel perhaps even uh, from from childhood to feel slightly different sometimes that flows into the mode of, of dress so they can um, fours can dress in a way to look a little bit distinctive it may be the whole garb it may be something very flamboyant or it may be just something really small that the four might feel makes them stand out to feel a bit different to feel a, a little bit different a distinctive kind of mode of fashion fours um, are usually quite empathic people very compassionate and uh, also with kind of vid vivid imagination those that are in say the writing or artistic professions will feel that the imagination kind of runs wild and is allowed to flow freely um, Fours don't necessarily, if I say not, like, not liking to be part of the crowd, that's meaning really not liking to be lumped in with everybody else. There's this feeling of being distinctive, a determination to be themselves no matter what anybody else may think. Other types like to kind of fit in with the crowd, not the four. They like to be distinctive. Uh, I put down in my notes the worst feeling and in fact also the worst word for a type 4 is the word ordinary I might come back to that word in a moment because uh, that's um, it, it's something we need to just think about in in terms of the four so I'll come back there um, sometimes I say there's this um, state of melancholy particularly if the four has been moved by something uh, moved with compassion or, or something has taken them down into a maybe a melancholy mood the very worst thing that a type four will want in that situation is for a jolly person to come along and try and lift the spirits and make them feel um, happy and uh, feel come back up again they're content they may be content to be in what to a lot of other people might look at sadness they might be quite happy in that sadness there may be times when if you see somebody like that you may want to just ask if they're okay and check up on them and the, the type four will be happy that they, they will tell you will be happy to be left uh, left in peace to process the emotion of the thing fours create um, can create ideals that there, there is um, a kind of a perfect image of, of something in their mind you'll, you'll see that four is connected through this line to, to type one type ones have ideals in their minds as well they often see what's wrong they are the reformers they'll see what's wrong and they will work to change it and reform it for the four they'll look at something that's wrong and 
and there'll be a sense of disappointment. It doesn't quite live up to the expectation that's there in the mind or the heart. They haven't quite yet got the right job. That person is just not quite the right person, the right relationship for them. This object, they like it, but it's not quite the thing. The clothing, the garment may not be quite right. And for the, for the four, that will um, give rise to a, a sense of, of disappointment. There's another word that um, fours can feel, and that's envy. Maybe somebody else got the right job. Maybe somebody else got the right person, not me. And there's a sense that I may have missed out. I was, um, I was quite moved to read a, a quote of Harold Coffin, the writer Harold Coffin. Envy is the art of counting other people's blessings instead of your own. And uh, that might be something that the four might do. The other person got it. I didn't quite get that. Now, this takes me back to the word ordinary that I, I mentioned a moment ago. For the four, for most fours, this word is um, not a good word at all. They want what's distinctive, what's beautiful. Beauty is another important word for the four. But this word ordinary is, means something kind of distasteful for the four. So one way out is to appreciate seeing the beauty in things that other people might count as, as ordinary. One thing fours can do is they often see beauty in things that to everybody else seem ugly. They're masters at doing that. They will see the beauty and, and loveliness almost in something that others would recoil from. But the word ordinary um, is, is different. The word ordinary is um, not so uh, good for the four. And the way out of, of this is to perhaps really appreciate the beauty of what's ordinary, the beauty of what's small, the beauty of what's unnoticed, the beauty of um, just thing, everyday things that are around us. And in drawing to a close, um, in each of these, I'm bringing a quote from um, the writer, the poet David White. Um, who's written this beautiful book called Consolations. And each week I'm selecting a word from David White's book. Um, and he gives new definition to it or expands definitions. And the word that I've selected from Consolations this week is the word gratitude. Um, because that's not to say that fours are not grateful but it's to find the gratitude, like finding the beauty in the ordinary, in the next breath, in the next meal, um, uh, whatever it happens to be. And, and um, David White says this, gratitude arises from paying attention, from being awake in the presence of everything that lives within and without us. Gratitude is the understanding that the underlying gift of life and the incarnation as a living, participating human being is a privilege, that we are miraculously part of something. Being unappreciative might mean we are simply not paying attention. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.